again everyone and welcome back to reddit aliens i'm john and as always thank you so much for being here scary topic for you today let's do it what dark secret are you hiding from everyone please remember to like share feel free to share and subscribe my stepdad tried to kill me when i was little trigger warning for domestic violence and language my stepdad was a grade a asshole he was in my life from the beginning, after my bio dad up and left, till I was about 13 or 14. He was an abusive, alcoholic, jobless dickwad who constantly physically and verbally abused both my mom and I. On multiple occasions, either my mom or I called the cops and watched them drag the sorry sack of shit out of the house and throw him in jail for a couple of days. They were, sadly, the happiest days of my childhood. When I was little, I can remember countless times where I had gotten into physical fights with the man, resulting in black eyes, cuts, bruises, the works. I won't go into detail any further, since it's kinda hard to talk about, but I will say this, I never told anyone about this. This is the first time I've gotten it down in writing or out in the open at all. When I was little, five to six years old I'd say, I lived with my mom and stepdad in my stepdad's parents' attic. My mom frequently went out during the day for work and didn't come home till late evening or night. Well, one day, after my parents had a pretty hostile argument, my mom left for work and my dad was pretty pent up. This is what I remember and continue to remember almost every day since the event. My dad took one of those large heavy-duty trash bags out of his parents' kitchen, dragged me into the living room of the attic stuffed me in the bag and tied it after letting out some air. I remember being terrified, too scared to act out of fear of getting hit or yelled at. I waited till I heard him close the attic door, then proceeded to use my fingers to claw a hole through the trash bag. I remember it taking a while, since I wasn't that strong at the time due to malnourishment and well, my age, but I eventually made it out and laid on the floor just waiting for my mom to get home. I don't know if she knows what happened, if she just thought I was playing with a trash bag or what, but that's what I remember and I've been carrying it for years. Thankfully she eventually left the dirt bag and I can now happily say I have an amazing father who I love very much, so this story does have a happy ending. Last Christmas I learned my sister and I don't have the same father and are technically half sisters. My sister's biological father tried to start a relationship with my mom that resulted in a pregnancy and ultimately didn't work out. That biological father is dead now, but I didn't probe any further about his identity or how he died in case it was something traumatic for my mom to remember. So she raised my sister as a single mother at my grandma's house in the 80s. Then she met my father and they started dating and it worked out because they got married in the 90s moved into a new house, and a short time after that, I was born. She told me never call my sister my half-sister and just pretend all of this doesn't matter because she's my sister and I'm keeping it that way. And if anyone asks about the 10-year age gap, I just tell them it's a long story. When I was a teenager, I worked at a novelty tourist shop near me. Being the idiot that I was, I stole a wad of cash from the store. It was $100 in ones. I told nobody, but they knew it was missing. Right about the same time, a co-worker, who was always trying to get me fired, was telling someone she got about $100 in tips from her other job. They ended up firing her, because they didn't trust that it wasn't her. When I was young, probably around 9 or 10, I was walking home with my dog from a house around the block when he cut the corner and walked diagonally through the yard of this super mean old lady who lived at the end of our street. She was in her yard at the time, tending to these really fancy looking rose bushes she had growing in beds along the border with her neighbor. My dog was a very friendly golden retriever, who didn't even really come near her, and certainly didn't do anything threatening, but she sprayed the F out of him with some kind of incesticide or other chemical she was using on her roses. I ran back home with the dog and hosed him off. He coughed a bunch, but seemed otherwise fine. I didn't tell my parents because somehow I thought I was going to get in trouble for letting the dog walk in her yard. I'm glad I didn't tell them though. 
because I decided that night to sneak downstairs out of the half bath window and down the street to her yard where I cut down every goddamn rose bush I could get my hands on. I'm not saying it's right what you did, but I might look the other way. When I was younger, I lived with my grandmother. Not long after I turned 18, her health started to decline. That sort of decline that you know means she won't be around for much longer. Over the months, I did my best to take care of her, getting her to the hospital when she needed and other things. We had someone coming every day to help her with things I couldn't. Well, what my family doesn't know is that the night she passed, I was in the living room watching TV. My dog was in bed with my grandma, and I started to hear her whimper and bark. I knew what was happening. I knew that if I acted, I could potentially save her. I didn't want to watch her suffer anymore, though. To watch her live with so much pain and unable to do anything for herself anymore. So I made the choice to let her pass before making any calls. She lived 92 years, and the only regret I have is that she passed a month after I would have graduated if I hadn't been kicked out of school. She had been in good enough health at the time to go to my graduation. I still kick myself for how stupid I was back then. I've struggled with disordered eating for at least a decade. It ebbs and flows. I know it's unhealthy, but the toxic part of me loves the feeling of being empty. Several years ago, it was really bad. I was at my lowest weight ever. I had brain fog, difficulty breathing. When I started eating again, my stomach would get really bloated, even if I only ate a small amount. I gained weight in the last year or so, and my depression and anxiety got really bad for a while. My family thinks I don't want to spend time with them. However, I just wanted to stay home because trying on my clothes and the idea of being in public made me want to kill myself. It was easier on me mentally to just stay home. I can feel myself slipping back into my old disordered eating habits, unfortunately. I found my adoption papers a few years ago when I was looking for a copy of my birth certificate. I know my birth mom, I just never had a relationship with her. My maternal grandmother took me in in 2002. I never knew she adopted me. I just knew that one day I ended up living with her after telling her one day I don't want to go back home lol. I also found a letter that my mom wrote as to why she was giving me up. That one really hurt. My PTSD isn't getting better. I have nightly nightmares of the industrial accident I was in. I see my coworker ripping his burnt face off every night. I no longer scream in my sleep because of it. I am no longer terrified as much by it. Even though I know it's not my fault, I feel an enormous amount of guilt for what happened to him. Sometimes when I'm not sleeping, I'll hear the scream he made in the distance and it'll make my blood feel like ice. Therapy hasn't done much. I'm sorry you went through that. I hope you're healing well and hopefully it does get better. My wife, her mom, and I bought a house about two years ago. Just from talking to the neighbors, I'd gathered that the family who lived here before had a daughter that was mixed up with the wrong people. We had some random person knock on our door at night saying he needed gas. We're down a long driveway. No way you'd randomly walk up to our house to ask for help. I think he was looking for the people who used to live here. And then another time, Sunday morning making pancakes for the family, I get a knock on the door and it's four sheriff's officers saying they received a 911 call that hung up and it was from the house. We don't have a landline and I assured them my wife and two-year-old did not make any call. They mentioned a name of the previous occupants and I'd let them know we moved in earlier this year and they seemed okay with that and left. Anyways, I was doing some yard work and struck up conversation with the neighbor. He saw the police cars and asked what was up. I told him the situation and he just goes, Oh yeah, that family was messed up. The cops were probably being cautious considering the shooting. What shooting I ask? He kind of looks at me with a sad worried face. The shooting in your house was what he said I truly baffled. He then proceeds to tell me that about two years before the father in the house confronted his daughter and boyfriend he didn't like and shot and killed the boyfriend in the house. Our state doesn't have a disclosure law, so we never knew. I was blown away. All the strange happenings kind of made sense now. He said the friend of the victim had kind of terrorized them for a while because the police were taking so long to press charges, slash tires, 
midnight fireworks odd shit that the neighbors hated. I was shocked, but just said, that's crazy. But hey, do me a favor and never tell my wife or mother-in-law about that. They are a little spooked by things like that. So the TRDL is that we live in a murder house and I'm the only one in my family that knows. When I was 16, I conspired with a heroin addict I met online to help me off myself with heroin and dump my body in a dumpster in exchange for my valuables. I lived in a small town, and he was in a bigger city where my school had an upcoming trip. We planned for me to slip away during the trip and meet up with him to do the deed. He chickened out last minute and ghosted me. It's heartbreaking hearing of so many people who were sexually assaulted as children and feeling like they have no option but to hide it lest it cause irreparable rifts between friends, family, and other close ones. Just want to let all of you affected by this know that if you did go public, you are not the cause of any conflict, no matter how anybody else paints it. You are the victim of one of the most heinous things one human being can do to another. The source of conflict is all down to whoever perpetrated the violence against you, and the shame should not be yours to live with. My brother and I did a 23andMe. We discovered we have a half-sibling, same father, who was older than us. I messaged them, but no reply. Since the half-sibling is older, it was during my father's military career, which was short-lived because he got a dishonorable discharge that he hides from his family still. Not a huge secret in comparison to some of these answers, but I feel the guilt of it often. After my fiancé passed, I napped all the time for over a year. My aunt was calling me one day, and I just denied her call, went back to napping. It was my aunt calling because my grandma, who was very sick with cancer, wanted to say happy birthday a day before my birthday. Grandma died the next day. Should have picked up the damn phone. My grandpa was stationed in Okinawa, Japan during the Korean War while in the Marines. He hooked up with a woman there, and she got pregnant. So, I have a Japanese aunt and a few cousins in Japan whom I've never met before. Two years ago, one of my best friends and I went halvesies on an F-ton of Xanax. On June 8th, we both took Xanax from the batch we split. I woke up. He didn't. No one knows if I had anything to do with the drugs that killed him, and I don't know if I can ever bring myself to tell someone. In high school, I was a super good kid, straight-A student who loved homework, keeping out of trouble, and who was quiet as hell during class. So anyway... There was this guy who was also in AP classes with me, but he was super loud and obnoxious, but would pull stunts in such a way that he would have some margin of plausible deniability. Though he never spoke, I'm not sure he even knew I existed, he rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe it was from the one cold day when this other girl in our class had her nipples poking through her shirt because she forgot a sweater, and he kept saying to her, Damn, it's cold, huh? Maybe it was from when he would pretend to be friends with a kid who was definitely Spectrum and desperate to be friends with him to do the bully's homework for him and then bully him the next day. I don't know. So, at random, sometimes once a week or a month or once every couple of months, I would whistle. It's this high-pitched whistle that sounds like a tea kettle that I can do while barely moving my mouth. Back then, no one knew I could do it except for my family. The super obnoxious kid always got in trouble. I was never once suspected. So if this is your dark secret that you're hiding from everyone, you have lived a charmed life. So that's great. And I'm happy for you. A little bit of mischief. I dig it. Totally fine. When I was around five or six, my mom and dad were fighting just about every day. Well, I was napping on the couch when my mom came in very upset and she shook me awake. She asked me if I saw the girl my dad brought home. I've always felt terrible for this because I hadn't seen anyone but my dad the whole day. I'm pretty sure he was just playing video games like usual, but for some reason, in my sleepy kid brain, I answered yes. I said she was with him in their room. I'm honestly not sure why I lied like that, but they got a divorce shortly after, and I always felt like it was my fault. Until recently, I found out my little sister is actually my half-sister, but that's a whole other story. In middle school, I made a smoking pipe out of copper pipe just for fun. I know you should not smoke out of copper, as the fumes are potentially toxic. My stepdad took it from me and started using it. He smoked with it for years. 
I hated him for physically abusing me, so I never said anything. It's now 30 years later, and he was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and likely only has a few years to live. I hope he rots in hell. I don't know if it had any effect, but I like to think the copper pipe played a role in his sickness as karma for being an asshole.